Hello everyone. So for the last lecture, we have exposed our business process or our state machine. So we have created an endpoint using ABI Gateway that allows us to invoke our process using a URL. In this lecture, we'll go through the other path of integrating with S3 and running this process as a patch. So we can upload a file with a specific directions or the information in this case to an S3 bucket. And this will invoke a Lambda function and this function can grab the file from the S3 bucket, read the contents and use them as input to the process and start an execution of this process. For this exercise, we'll go through some steps. So we first have to update the IAM rule used with the Lambda function to have access to S3. Second, we write the Lambda code and create the Lambda function that will be triggered by the S3 bucket create object and has the capacity to read this file and start an execution based on the inputs within this file. We will package our code together with the step functions SDK we have created in the last lecture. We will create the process order S3 Lambda function. We will create S3 bucket in the same region as the Lambda function. This is very important. If it's in different region, you cannot create triggers between them. We will create a trigger between the Lambda function and the S3 bucket for object created. So anytime object created with a specific prefix and suffix, this will trigger our Lambda function. And we will test this by uploading a file to this bucket and see how the solution behaves. So let's get into it. I will start first by updating the IAM rule. So this is the rule I will use with my Lambda function and the thing we need to add here is S3 read access. S3 read only access, attach policy. Now the IAM rule looks good. The next step is to create the Lambda function. And for this, let's head to the code and examine what this function is supposed to do. So this is the code for our Lambda function. We have a couple of declarations the same way we have done with the other function. And here we also declared S3 because we need this. And then within the handler code, we get the bucket and the file from the event. So as this will be triggered by an object upload, by an object created in S3, you can get the bucket and the key. The key represents the file name or the object that has been created in the bucket. We are logging the bucket name and the key. And then we are creating a params input with the bucket name and the key and we will use this to get the object. So we are calling here S3 get object, passing the parameters. This will return the file or the object in data variable. We are handling the error and then in case of success, we are parsing the contents of this file, which is the body, data.body.toString. We are parsing this into a JSON object and then we will go through the JSON object to extract the product ID and the quantity and use this to create an execution of our state machine defined with this ARN. We'll have to change this ARN to reflect the correct state machine created in our environment. And so just a few reflections here. You see that we are getting the contents of the file as JSON. And then it's up to us how we would handle this file. So you could have multiple entries in the same file. You could have like 1000 orders in one file and you can just parse them into a JSON object. So you will have a JSON array of these objects and you just traverse through this array and start an execution for each one of these. So with this approach, it's all up to your application logic. How would you handle this batch file? So I'll just replace this ARN with the correct ARN from my environment and you should do the same in your environment. So now I have my source code ready and I already have the SDK, the step functions SDK created from the last lecture. I will package these two files into an archive and I will use this archive to create my Lambda function. The next step is to create the Lambda function. So heading to Lambda. Create Lambda function blank, next, 
I will name this process order S3. And I will choose my archive. And here I have to change the handler name to reflect my file name. Choose existing rule, lambda step functions. This is the rule that I have added S3 support to. Everything else looks fine. Next, create function. Okay, you see here our code. So this looks good. The function has been created and the next step is to create the bucket in S3. Heading to S3 now. Create bucket. I will just name it process order batch. And you have to make sure that the region is the same region as your lambda functions. Inside the bucket, you can actually configure the triggers in two ways. You can configure it right from the bucket here, from events, and you can choose lambda function. However, I prefer to do it from the lambda function. So let's get to the lambda function in a new tab and configure the trigger. Here is my function, triggers, add trigger. So here we will choose S3, but just as you see, all of these could be a potential triggers to your Lambda function. So you can integrate your process or your state machine with anything of these. You can insert a record in DynamoDB and use this to trigger your function. So the integration points are really wide. Choose S3. Choose your bucket, object created, and we will just add a prefix and a suffix for the file. So we make sure that only relevant files will trigger our function. Not every file that will be uploaded to the bucket will trigger our function, only files with a specific prefix and suffix. So I will choose process order as prefix and dot JSON as suffix. So this looks good. We have created the function. We have created the bucket. We have linked them with a trigger. I think we are ready to start testing this. And to test this, we'll just create a test file and upload it to the bucket. So this is the file we have created for testing. We have a product ID of one and a quantity of three. And the file has the prefix process order and it has a suffix .json. So this meets our trigger requirements. Let's upload this file to the bucket and see how it goes. Going to my S3. I'm already under the bucket, so I'll choose upload, add my file. Start upload. File has been uploaded successfully, so if everything went fine, we should have an instance running of our state machine right now. So let's head to step functions. And here you go, you see that we have one finished. Let's get inside. This is the one that has been just created, execution lambda s3 one. This is the product ID we have passed from the file. And you can see that it took the bus of processing the order because we have quantity is three, and this resulted in inventory exists as the output. So inventory exists is true as the output of receive order function. So let's upload another file with a quantity greater than five and see how it goes. Upload. Start. Get back to the step functions. And you see that we already have another execution created with suffix 15. And for this guy, the order has been declined because the input was quantity is 10. So out of the receive order, 
function inventory exists is false so one final thing let's get to the logs of the lambda function and see what we have in there process order monitoring in the monitoring you usually can see the incidents the utilization and everything but what we care about now is just the logs you see here it has two streams and here you go you see the logs and you see the custom logs we have added to the code so we usually print the bucket name and the file name so this was the first one process order patch this is the bucket name process order one this is the file name and this is the second one and you see here that this one resulted in starting the execution described here and this one resulted in starting this execution if you have any errors or exceptions you can track them down here and see how to fix them so that's it for this lecture guys we have created a kind of a business process which is a state machine or a state function we have tested this process from the console by starting manual executions and then we have exposed this service with an HTTP endpoint so we can trigger our process and start an instance by calling a URL and passing the input parameters as query string and we have now integrated this process as part of a batch processing task so we can upload batch file with the inputs needed and this batch file triggers a lambda function that reads the input and starts process instances accordingly and as you see all what we have created is serverless we didn't provision a single server instance yet everything is scalable and highly available to the maximum extent you can imagine this is one interesting service you can utilize in your applications to offer a workflow simple workflow service thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me for any questions or clarifications Thank you.